One of the things I love about living in the Pacific Northwest is the plethora of mossy green fairyland-type forests. And recently, a small group of us found a really wonderful spot that just has a lot of these streams with all these tiny little rocks, and then it leads to a really gorgeous waterfall. And this scene here is the epitome of why I love this part of the country. I have a nice little haze coming from the background from the overcast sky. The light is just caressing the tops of those mossy trees. And then I have a nice, beautiful stream with uh, water rushing through. And by using filters, such as neutral density filters, I'm able to create a longer exposure of this image, giving the water a nice, soft, flowy look. Now this is a photo I'm gonna be processing here in this perfect inspiration video. I'll go ahead and show you another angle of this scene. I photographed the other image off of this bridge that you see here. And this tree right here is the one that you can see featured in uh, this shot. So that's that tree. So let's go ahead and get started processing this photo of this image photographed along the Columbia River Gorge. Now I, I converted this to DNG when I imported it. So it's a raw file. So I'm inside of Adobe Lightroom, and right now I'm in the develop module. This was photographed uh, with a Canon 5D Mark III and a 24 to 70 millimeter lens. And so I've got the raw file here. I'm going to make a few basic adjustments in the basic panel, and then I'll move it into On One Software to kind of finish off with some of the stylization. I'll start at the top with the white balance. I personally think that the white balance looks pretty good. I typically use auto white balance in the camera, and most of the time it does a really great job. But let's go ahead and see what Lightroom thinks the auto white balance should be. Now, I don't didn't really see much of a change there. Let me just toggle my before and after real quickly. And it's, it's, it's like so subtle you can barely see it. Um, but there is a very slight change. I'll go ahead and keep it as is uh, with this auto setting. And now let's go down to the tone and do the same thing. Let's go ahead and see what happens if I click on the auto button. It looks like Lightroom wanted to really brighten up and add a lot of contrast to the image. And I, I don't like the effect that it, it created. So I'm gonna do a Command Z to undo that. And I'll just go ahead and go through each of these settings uh, one by one. Now I could go through and move the sliders here to the right or to the left. But what I'm gonna do instead is I'm going to click inside of that number on the right and use my up and down arrow keys to adjust each of these settings. That way I can make very small, subtle uh, incremental changes instead of it being a really big push to the right or to the left. And I'm gonna press the button two or three times just to increase the exposure in the image. Next, I'll hit the tab key to go down to contrast. And I think I'm gonna leave a contrast as is uh, I don't really want to add any more contrast at this point. I'll go down to the highlights, and I'm going to reduce the highlights a little bit. Now, if I just hit the arrow key once or twice, it's just going down in increments of 1. But if I add a shift key to it, then it will go down in increments of 10. So right now it's at minus 12, and if I tap it one more time, holding that shift key, it goes down to minus 22. I'm going to hit escape real quickly to escape out of that setting and then I'm just going to do a quick toggle before and after to see what I've got going on. So really what I've done so far is just added a tiny touch of brightness and kind of reduced some of the highlights in both the back area here as well as in the water. Let me go back and I'll click on the shadows to continue with this process. I'm going to hold the shift key down and then press the up arrow to increase the shadows by 10. I'm going to go up again to 20. Now I'm going to actually click on the white slider and drag this around because I want to see what happens if I push the whites all the way to the left, kind of an extreme setting. And let's see what happens if I push it to the right. So let's go ahead and go to the left. It kind of darkens up the bright areas a little bit. I don't really like that because I want to make sure that this bright area to the back, kind of this hazy spot, uh, stays intact. So instead I'm actually going to move it to the right set it about 24 right there. Next we have blacks. And I'm actually going to decrease some of the black values. It's akin to decreasing contrast, 
but it's only affecting the darkest areas. So I'll do a quick before and after toggle. I'm really just going for a nice baseline image, something I can move into perfect effects and be a, a really good starting point. So this is all I'm going to do inside of Lightroom. Let's go ahead and go into On One Software to finish processing the image. I'll go up to File, Plug in Extras, Perfect Effects 9. And On One Software will open the image as a smart photo inside of Perfect Effects. I'm going to start off by adding a color enhancer filter from the Filter Options panel. By default, it adds an auto color filter. I'll go ahead and do a quick before and after toggle so you can see what it's doing. And I really like what it did, especially to the background and that, that hazy portion of the scene. It kind of neutralized some of that warm color that was going on in the background. But I'm going to make a few more adjustments to this image as well. I'd really like to brighten up some of the reds and the greens in the photo. So I'll go down to the color range section. And first I'm gonna select red. My intent is to brighten up and intensify the color of the leaves that are sitting on the ground. So I'll move the saturation slider to the right. First I'm gonna move it all the way to the right because I want to see, because I want to see what is actually being affected. And then I'll take it back a little bit and set it to about 14 there. I'm also gonna brighten it up. And this is only affecting those leaves on the ground. I'm gonna do a before and after toggle, like what I see so far. Now I'm gonna to go to the orange color range and do pretty much the same thing. I'm just gonna click here in the saturation to increase the saturation of just those orange hues. And then I'll move the brightness slider a little bit to the right. Now I'll do a before and after toggle and see what it looks like. I think we've got some good things going on here so far. Next, I'm gonna go into the yellows. Now, if your intention is to edit and manipulate the greens, such as the foliage, or in this case, moss on the trees, oftentimes there's a lot more yellow tones in those colors than green tones. So first, I'm going to see what happens if I actually alter the hue of those greens. So you can see by moving it to the right, it just kind of makes it an unnatural shade of green. If I go further to the left, it warms them up quite a bit. I'm not sure if I wanna do much in terms of the actual hue. I'll keep that as close to zero as possible, but I'm gonna increase the saturation a little bit. Now let's see what happens if I move the brightness slider up to the right a little bit, and it just kind of brightened everything up. I'll do a quick before and after toggle. And I'm really making very basic, very subtle adjustments to this image. Sometimes subtlety has a lot more power when processing a photo than going overboard with really intense effects. I'm finished with this filter, so I'm gonna go ahead and add another empty layer in the filter stack. Next, I'm gonna to go to the Glow folder. I'll click the arrow to the left to drop it down, but it's kinda of hard to see these small thumbnails, and even if I set them so that they're larger, it's still a little tough to tell what they look like. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna click on this little icon to the right of the folder name, and this will bring them into a larger view. And then I can use the plus icon on my keyboard to see them a little bit larger. Now what I'm going for is a glowy look in the background in kind of the hazy portion, but I don't want to add any glow to the dark areas. And it looks like this angel glow here at the top is pretty much what I'm looking for. So I'm gonna go ahead and select that and we'll see what it looks like. So that did a good job of adding a nice subtle glow to the background. I'm gonna to toggle the layer on and off to see if it affected anything else in my image. And it looks like it affected some of the water portion. So I'm gonna do some masking using a masking bug to make sure that the area that's affected is really only the top half of my scene. So in the toolbar, I'll select the masking bug, and then I'm gonna change the preset to linear bottom. If you look at the little icon with the preset, there's a white strip on the top and a black strip on the bottom. The white portion in a mask is what is going to be revealed from that layer, and the black area is where the effect will be hidden. So for this scene, wherever I click, and I'll just go ahead and click here in the middle, it adds the effect to the top half of wherever I clicked, and the bottom half is not affected. 
Now I'm going to go into the filter options to make a few changes to these settings. I'll start with the amount, and I'm going to move the amount slider to the right. I'm not going to go all the way, but I do want to increase the amount of glow that's happening in that background. Now I'm going to take the halo, and I'm going to move this to the right as well. And that really just kind of softened that glow a little bit more. I'm also going to move the warmth slider up just a few notches. I don't want to completely warm that background up, but I do want to add just a tiny touch of warmth to it. The style is set to lighten, but I'm going to go ahead and just scroll over the other options just to see what they do. You can see that a lot of them are adding uh, quite a bit of darkness to the black areas. But overall, I think lighten is going to be the best choice for this. All right, so that's all I'm going to do for the glow filter. Now I'm going to add another empty layer. And I'm going to go over to the color enhancer filters once again. So I'll click on the arrow to the left. And I want to see if there's anything I can do to the water to kind of make it stand out a little bit more. I have two options that I can choose from. I can either make it more cool and kind of tint it with a little bit of blue, or I can see if there's any color in it and remove a lot of that color altogether. So let's go ahead and start out with kind of purifying the highlights with that. So I'm gonna go down to the Purify Highlights filter and I'll click on it once. Now this affected the entire image. I'll just toggle this filter on and off. But I definitely don't want the water to be warmed up at all. And I absolutely don't want the entire image to be affected with whichever filter I choose. But before I change the filter, uh, first I'm gonna do a little bit of masking so that way only the water in this scene is affected. So I'll go ahead and select the masking brush. And then I'll go down to the bottom here I'm going to increase the size of my brush, but I can see that there's a little minus sign there, meaning that I'm going to be painting out. Now I don't want to paint out. I want to make sure that the area that is painted in is just this little creek here. So before I start masking, what I need to do is go up to the top right and select invert. Now this inverts my mask so that none of the filter is showing and the mask is black. Now I'll go back over to my water area and you can see that now I'm painting in. It automatically switched my brush mode to paint in. So I'll go ahead and just start painting. And I'm using a Wacom tablet here which gives me a little bit more ease of actually brushing. I'm gonna decrease the brush size by using my left bracket key and I'm gonna paint the rest of that a uh, little stream area off in the background. I'm not overly concerned with complete accuracy here. I have a little bit of wiggle room uh, because of the way this image is set up with the rocks and the water and everything. I'll show you guys a quick uh, mask red view of that. Now I said I'm not concerned and I take that back a little bit because I did get a little bit more of those rocks than I was hoping to. So I'm gonna hit X to paint out and now I can see a lot better uh, some of those areas that I'm painting, and I'll just do a quick sweep over those rocks. So that way it's really mostly just as, mostly the water, but some of those rocks I'm not overly concerned about. I'm gonna go back to that after view now. Now if I go back over to the filter stack and click on the eyeball to toggle that on and off, if you pay attention to the water portion of the image, it's adding a little bit of warmth to it, which I definitely don't want to do. So now that I have this mask created, any filter that I add is really only going to affect the water portion or the masked area of my scene. So I'm going to scroll down. First, I'm gonna try the Sky Enhancer. And what the Sky Enhancer does is it deepens skies. In this case, it's, it should theoretically change or intensify the colors of the water because the water has a hint of blue to it. I'll find out real quickly by toggling that layer on and off, and it did, in fact, intensify the colors in, that, uh, in the water area. So that's a possibility. I'm, I'm going to keep that in my head for this, the sky filter, maybe the one that I want to work with. Uh, let's see what increased color does. 
That didn't do uh, too much different than what the sky enhancer filter did. So that's another option. And now I'm going to go with kind of the more extreme, which is cooler. And this is really going to cool down the water quite a bit. I'm not sure if I really want to go uh, with the, the cooler effect, at least in this intensity. If I were to go with this effect, I probably would want to play around maybe with some of my blending modes. So let me just kind of scroll through and see if any of these do the trick. Now, I don't think I'm going to use this this filter. I think I'm definitely going to go back down to my sky enhancer. I think that was the best one. Again, this is a very, very subtle adjustment. And I'll do a quick before and after toggle of the entire image so you can see what has changed so far. So we went from a very warm image uh, with kind of a monotone color throughout to an image that has a little bit more of a color balance. I've brightened up some of those leaves added a little bit of color to the water, and I've also intensified that haze in the background. Now I'm gonna add another filter, so I'll add a new empty layer to my filter stack. I'm gonna go over to the left and I'm gonna collapse the color enhancer panel. And I'm gonna go into the sunshine filters because I wanna see what these could potentially do to my photo. Now again, I'd like to see these a little bit larger, so I'm gonna go ahead and click on this little icon to the right of the folder name. Now overall, I do really like what these are doing to the photo. They are a little bit intense, a little bit too strong for my taste, but that can definitely be changed using the filter options panel. So I'm just gonna start out with the sunshine filter, so I'll go ahead and click on that. And now let's head over here into the filter options. First, let's play with the amount slider. I'll move it to the right a little bit. I think I like how that looks. I honestly, I don't like what it's doing to the water, but I can change that by masking it out. So I'll get all of my effects set and then we'll go ahead and mask that out uh, at the, for the last step. I'm also gonna move the warmth slider down a little bit. Let me double click on that. I'm gonna hit minus one to set that to minus one. And I'm gonna see what happens if I increase the glow on this. I don't want to go too much because I've already added glow. Yeah, that's a little too much, so I'll just keep that glow set to zero and just kind of stick with my original glow. Now I'm going to go up to the filter stack and toggle this layer on and off to see what the effect has done. All right, so the next step is to mask out the water, but I've already kind of created a mask for the water in a previous filter, and that's with this color enhancer. So what I'll do is I'll copy this mask and then I'll just invert it on the sunshine layer. To do that, first I click on the color enhancer filter, and then I go up to mask, copy mask. Next, I go to the sunshine filter, and then go to mask, paste mask. Now the mask is only applied to the water, and I want it to be the opposite. So I'll make sure that I'm in one of the masking modes and then go to the top right of the tool options and click invert. I'm also going to reduce the layer opacity a little bit. I do like the effect, but it's a little intense. So I'm gonna drop it down to about, about 60. That should be a good number. Now let's do a quick before and after toggle. I'm gonna actually head back down to my filter options for the sunshine filter, and I'm going to drop my saturation down Let's see what minus one will do. The color was a little too intense and I kind of want to go for a little bit more realistic look as opposed to an over stylized look. So I'm going to drop it down again. I'll go down to minus three. And then I'll do a quick before and after toggle. And I think things are looking really nice. I'm just going to do a quick zoom to 100%. I'm just going to see what my sharpness looks like. So let's go ahead and add a sharpening layer. I'll go ahead and click on that plus icon. And then in the filter options, I'll go down to sharpening. There are some pretty good presets that you can select here from the dropdown. And the great thing is, as you hover over them, you can actually see what they're doing to the photo. I'm just preparing this photo to share online, so I'm not concerned with printing it. I'll go ahead and scroll down to the screen filters 
and see what these are doing. I like the screen low because it's not adding too much sharpness, so it's not adding any artifacts. Let me go ahead and toggle that on and off. That's adding just enough sharpness to kind of bring out the contrast in those small details. I'm going to go back to my full screen view by clicking Command-0. And I'm finished with processing this photo. Uh, but before I leave Perfect Effects, I'm going to save my preset. So I'll go up to Preset, Save Preset. I'll give my preset a name. I'll select a category. I will add my name as the creator. And then I'll give it a description. When I'm finished, I'll click Create. And if I look over in the presets, I'll see that preset that I just created. Now I'm done, so I'll go ahead and click Apply. Now on one will apply that preset and save the file and then bring it back into Lightroom. So here's my finalized image. I'll go ahead and put this alongside my original image so you can see the changes that I've made.